This might be a little excessive because it is only one book, but um, for the amount of money I paid for this, you better bet that I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm going to have to start a GoFundMe. Yes, I got from Blood and Ash and hardcover. This is so much better than the paperback. Like it is literally, it's so much better. The paperback just enrages me. This is, this is perfect. I am, it was an ungodly amount of money, but it's finally here. Hey guys, it's Jenna here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be filming my July wrap up and also discussing what I did not finish for July. So I wanted to have this video up sooner, but unfortunately it just didn't work out like that. So as you know, uh, I had one, I actually had like a little over a week left in July to finish the last five books on my TBR. And unfortunately I just didn't end up doing that. <laughs> uh, I took a break and I had planned to post a TBR early uh, and let you guys know that there wasn't going to be a final vlog for July, but it just didn't work out that way and sometimes that happens. But today we will get into what I did manage to finish in July. So without further ado, let's get into that, shall we? So, let's start from the beginning, shall we? The first book I managed to finish in July was Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Uh, this is the first book in the Crescent City series. Uh, this was House of Earth and Blood and this was phenomenal. I like I'm torn between I wish I would have picked this up sooner and like I'm glad I saved it uh, so long so I could enjoy it more. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. Five out of five stars. I can't wait for the sequel. Next, I finished Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This was really good as well. There were some things that I would have changed. Like, I wish that it was a little bit longer and less rushed at the end. Uh, then again, that could have also been on me. Um, but it just felt really rushed at the end. And I was really confused because of that. So I did end up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars though. So I am still looking forward to reading the sequel. Then I finished The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, and this was literally like everything I dreamed it would be. This was so good. It was so <sighs> fantastical and so comfortingly gay. This was so like wholesome. I, I love this so much and I really hope that this book gets a sequel. And then I finished Captive Prince by C.S. Picot. Um, I gave House on the Cerulean Sea a 5 out of 5 stars, by the way. This, however, I gave a 3.5 stars to. Um, there wasn't too much... Like, there was a plot, but there was just so much political agendas. There were so many political agendas, and it was hard to keep track, and... There were so many random characters introduced and that, and it was very uh, morally gray. So if you have any trigger warnings, definitely look those up before you go into this. Um, but I would read the sequel just because of the way that things ended in the book. Uh, and yeah, it, it wasn't a terrible read. It just, I feel like we could have gotten more out of it. And then I read Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. This was so good. I loved this. If you're looking for an enemies to lovers with a morally gray MC, sassy, sassy feminine hero, heroine, I should say, this was good. I used to never think that I was into like 
nautical piratey on the sea shit uh on the sea books but this i think has officially turned the tide in my favor of them no pun intended so good five out of five stars if i didn't say that already and i'm beyond excited to read the sequel and then finally for the month of july i finished an emotion of great delight by tahera mafi and this is literally this was literally one of the most beautiful books i've ever read um i was super sleep deprived when i read it though so i would love to like immediately reread it uh, probably not in August, but I do want to reread this book very soon. This book was like so heartbreakingly beautiful, I would say, because it's a beautifully written book, but it is just so sad that like it makes you want to just rip out your heart. It's just, <sighs> there. I don't have enough words to describe this book, but I just... I want to reread it again and I really want to get like extra connected to the characters so that this book hurts me as much as it was meant to. But right off the bat, um, this was a phenomenal book. I gave it a four and a half stars um, solely because again, I wished it had been longer, but we don't always get what we want sometimes, do we? So now we can go over uh, what I was supposed to finish in July and then didn't end up finishing. We can get into that now. So the first book was Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. Uh, I was really excited to read this, but I just ended up getting into a pretty big reading slump after, uh, my readathon and I don't know, it's been a funky couple of weeks. I just finished like all of Outer Banks season two in like a day so and on top of that I've watched like four Marvel movies in the past two days so I've had a lot of TV time <laughs> and anyways so Rhapsodic I'm still really excited to read this I just don't think I'm going to be putting it on August TBR because I already kind of have my TBR mapped out so this will probably go on a later TBR, but it is a kind of dark book, so maybe this can be like an October read for like a Halloween readathon. So we will see. Next, I have House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland that I was supposed to finish. Uh, this I actually started and I got like 100 pages into it on audio, but again, I was kind of sleep deprived, so I don't really remember it. So I still need to kind of go back and reread this. And I, again, think that this is something I'm going to save for fall. Because a lot of people have said that it really does give that creepy vibe. <sighs> Next, I was supposed to finish From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitro. But I did not. And it was just a very chunky, intimidating book. And I was kind of holding out for the hardcover because this is intimidating so much more intimidating compared to this in my mind anyways like i'm gonna choose this every day of the week but they are both very beautiful that one i will be moving on to next month's tbr if you did not get the memo next i have it ends with us by colleen hoover this one I was also really excited and I'm getting more excited because I'm seeing a lot of hype for it on booktube or book talk. So I might have to moderate my TBR a little bit to accommodate from Blood and Ash and possibly this one. But uh TBR is already getting pretty large. Pretty large. Uh especially with the last book that I was supposed to finish being Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I made it 60, um, almost 70 pages into this. And I don't know, I feel like I'm not gonna be in the mood for it if I don't finish it during summer. So I definitely wanna try to do that. And yeah, so that was everything I did manage to finish and all of the things I did not manage to finish and why I didn't finish them as well as which ones we'll be moving on to next month. We're going to be diving into my August TBR uh, as promised, here's my August TBR. I am hoping to bring back my TBR, uh, weekly TBR challenges. Uh, see if I can maybe do a little better this month. 
but that remains to be seen. So today I actually have a pretty large TBR, TBR in store for you guys this month. Uh, there are 16 books on this TBR with, well, there are 14 books on the immediate TBR and two extras as bonus books. So we had a big one this month, but I am so thoroughly excited for everything I have on this TBR that I think it's going to be a really good month. So I'll let you guys decide. So the first book, these are going in no particular order. They're just all like laid out in a row. And that's the order I dropped them in on my bed. So first one is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I finally have the hardcover. I finally feel like I can actually read out of this book. And I'm excited to finally see what all the hype is about about these damn books. So that is book number one. Uh, I am sorry, I am probably not going to be going into synopsises in this TBR just because I do that kind of um, during the reading week challenges. So I'm going to refrain from doing synopsises now. I don't want to make the video too big and bulky. Next on my list is A Curse of Dark and Lowling by Bridget Kemmerer. Kem Kemmerer. And this is a be uh, um, Beauty and the Beast retelling, but I'm pretty sure one of these characters is, doesn't she have like cerebral palsy? Yeah, she has cerebral palsy. And anyways, I have heard so many good things about this series and I'm pretty sure all the books are out now. So I can finally hop on the bandwagon and get into it, see what it's all about. And yeah, pretty, pretty excited for the list of books I got on this month's TBR, guys. Not gonna lie. I've been waiting to film this TBR for a while. Next is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And this is, um, that's why I'm here. All I know about this is it's set in like the 1920s and it's like a, um, it's set in Shanghai and it's like a Romeo and Juliet retelling between gangs and 10 out of 10. The author's on TikTok too and she's pretty cool. Next we have Survive the Night by Riley Sagar. Perfect for right now. This book, like, its aesthetic reminds me of 1984 American Horror Story. Uh, so this, all I know about this is that it's a thriller. I don't want to know anything else about this because they always put too much into synopsis nowadays. And I'm pumped for this. It's pretty short. I really wish I would have been able to read his books in order, but I really don't care. Actually, again, we've never figured this out. I'm not sure if, like, what pronouns Riley Sagar is. I, I'm not actually sure. Like, I never found that out. Um, but I'm excited for this one. I've been waiting for this book for a while. I said that about Home Before Dark, too, and I still haven't read that. But that's because I'm saving that for October. It's Haunted House. What do you expect from me? Next, we have Fable by Adrienne Young. And it's another swashbuckling adventure with a redhead main character. I'm so excited. I hope she's like a Losa. Um, her name is Fable, which is really cool. And also this book is signed. But I don't really know anything about this, but it sounds pretty similar to Daughter of the Pirate King. And I really don't want to know too much about it because the, the less I know about books, the more like every little thing surprises me and that's honestly like a little dose of serotonin whenever I can get it. So hence um it does bite me in the ass sometimes. Kind of like when I didn't read the Crescent City synopsis. Mm-hmm. If any of you have read Crescent City you know what a shock I was in for. Anyways, next on this TBR is Imagine Me by Tejera Mafi, 
And this is the final book in the Shatter Me series, besides the novella coming out that I am very excited she announced because that is what prompted me to want to read this. I've been putting it off for so long because um, I have commitment issues in finishing things that have become my favorite thing. So I have not read this yet. And I know that I need to because I don't want to get spoilers. <sighs> But I, I'm not ready for it to end. And because now it's not truly ending, I can read it. Same with Crescent City. So, really excited to find out what happens in the last book. I might need to reread Define Me or at least skim read the end of it. But I'm pretty sure I got a general gist of what happens. Now we're going to crank it up to like a thousand degrees. And we got some smut on August TV because... What did you really expect of me, honestly? And so the first book we have is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. And all I really gather from this and all I really want to gather from this is that this is just like um, a smutty modern retelling of Hades and Persephone. Yeah, that's all we need to know. Okay, moving on, we have... Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller, and I'm so, so, so very excited to get into this. I miss Aloosa and Raiden already, and I cannot wait to see what they have in store for us in the second book. Here we go again. And we also have A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett Sinclair, which again is a smutty retelling of Hades and Persephone. And that's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. Oh, God. And then we have Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. And this is, again, smutty, modern retelling. But only this one is Jasmine and Jafar and Aladdin, from what I gather. And we don't need to talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. Moving on, we have We All Looked Up by Tommy Wallach. I know that one threw you guys off, didn't it? So I just decided to pick a random book off my TBR that was a contemporary because I decided that I have not been reading enough contemporaries and they're all high fantasy or smut. So that's how this little guy ended up on my TBR. Um... Basically, this is about an asteroid that's about to hit Earth in two months, so these friends only have two months to live. Sounds very damaging. Wonder why my subconscious picked that one up. Next on the TBR, I have kind of like a reread, but also kind of not. Um, I want, I'm going to reread Crave by Tracy Wolf. Uh, mostly because I did this during a readathon and I got confused. So, and I've heard that it gets really good, even from, you know, you guys might have seen this. I don't know if you guys have TikTok, but this girl, she trashed the books on TikTok and then Entangled Teen, who published this, sent her a care package with all of the rest of the books in them. And she ended up reading the rest of them and loving them, so... I think I'm gonna give it another shot and I really want to like know what went on in this book before I move on to the other one. I have the second one but I don't have the third one and I know that the fourth one hasn't come out yet but pretty interested. So we're gonna reread this. I remember like most of what happens but I just need I just like need to connect all the pieces better. Um, so yeah I'm gonna reread Crave. Speaking of rereads, bam, how long has it been since we saw one of these books on my rereads list? Uh, it's time for me to reread Throne of Glass. I have done reread, reread Aquatar like four times since I've reread this, so I think, I think that it's time. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna reread, probably gonna reread the whole series. 
maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Next on my TBR, we have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is the final book on my actual TBR. And all I know about this is that this is kind of like a Sherlock Holmesy, Holmesy book. So I've heard fantabulous things and I've given it a couple years. So there are quite a bit of books out in the series. Did I say that tongue twister? And I figure there was no better time like the present than to finally get into it and take it off my TBR. So Truly Devious is on the TBR. And for the bonus books, we are carrying over two books that I did not finish last month. Just as bonus books in case I get around to them. And they are It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover and Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. These were the chosen ones to move on. So Rhapsodic and House of Hollow are going to be saved for spookier months. And From Blood and Ash got chosen to be cemented into next month's TBR. And these have been benched as bonus books. So that is my lofty TBR goal for August. Um, wish me luck and let me know in the comments if you guys have read any of these and if you've enjoyed them. And yeah. Um, last call, if anybody is interested in me doing a book on haul video where the books are also available for you guys, let me know because I am on like a whole purging rampage on getting rid of stuff. So I am hoping to have a decent on haul. And if that's something you guys are interested in, the books are available. Uh, it would be, I figured it would be more fair to offer them to you guys first, but only if that's something anybody is interested in. So yes, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time for a new video.